Hey, what's up? I'm Ryan. I'm an American. Today we're going to learn about, or at least I'm going to learn about, British schools. British schools explained. Now this is only four minutes, so this I guess this will be in my introduction. You know, I'm definitely going to dive deeper. Subscribe to go deep. But for now, let's watch this. Hi, I'm Siobhan Thompson and this is Anglophenia. Now, many of the most beloved stories from the UK are set in schools, all the way from Tom Brown's school days to Harry Potter and the History Boys. But the British True. school system is remarkably different from that in the US, so mm. much so that it's often the first thing that Americans ask me to explain to them. Mm. So, here is the Cliff's Notes version of how the British school system works, but Excellent. study up because there's going to be an exam at the end of the video. <laughs> Hopefully I can remember what's in a four minute video. Public schools and state schools. What Americans call private schools are called public schools in the UK. And How can that be? What? Those are literally antonyms. They mean the opposite. How can it be that a public school is a, is a private school? Which is it? Is it public or private? Because here in America, a private school is a private school. What Americans call private schools are called public schools in the UK, and what you call public schools, we call state schools. There <laughs> okay, state schools. See, that makes sense. That makes sense. Makes perfect sense, because it's run by the state. Okay, but why is a private school called a public school? There are also some private schools that don't call themselves public schools, they call themselves private or independent schools, but most of the ones that Americans are thinking of- Independent school makes sense. ...about, you know, where people live in a mansion and wear a very silly uniform, hmm. are called public schools. Got <laughs> They usually are rich people. Got it? Most state schools these days are comprehensives, meaning that they accept students of every academic ability. But there was a system that's still in place in some areas of secondary modern and grammar schools. There, kids take a test at 11 to see what type of school they'll go to. <laughs> Dang, that's kind of... It's kind of savage. I don't know. Sending kids like, uh, yeah, you're going over there. And you go in line with those kids, okay? And you look at the line, it's a bunch of like... It's like the it's like stupid kids. And you're like, like, wouldn't your parents be like disappointed? Or is it or is it just that the 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 be, the better school or the smarter kid school is is just like for really exceptional kids? Because there's still stuff like that in the U.S. The grammar schools being more academic and the secondary moderns more vocational. Church schools. <laughs> okay, There's no it. separation of church. At 11 years old though, dang, that's a little early. Church and state in the UK. So many schools, both state and public, are church schools. Church schools? It's more vocational. What? Church schools. There's no separation of church and state in the UK. <laughs> so many schools, both state and public, are church schools. Oddly, this doesn't translate into later church attendance, which is much lower in the UK than in the US. Matt, huh, okay. It's sort of like how most people don't use algebra after the age of 18, I guess. Uniforms. Pretty much all schools have some kind of uniform, ranging from a school jumper all the way up to the white tie and tails that they wear at Eton. The idea behind <laughs> it is to create the uniforms are cool. A sense of identity and school pride. See? <laughs> I kind of like it. I think that's probably... It's probably the way to go. Because, well, I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. I bet you guys hate it. Maybe. <sighs> Still fits. But I just feel like it would, you know, unite the people a little bit better, you know, because here in America, there's a lot of bullying that goes on as far as what kind of clothes you have. Um, now, if you still didn't like wash your uniform, I'm sure you get bullied, right? Like the kid with the dirty, raggedy uniform that's like totally wrinkly and stuff. They probably get bullied. And what kind of shoes you wear on the, are the shoes part of the uniform? Prefects. In British schools, older students can be chosen to be prefects. Being a prefect sounds super cool, but... 
I don't know what that means. In reality, it mostly entails policing the lunch line and stopping the younger kids from hitting each other. You do get a cool badge though, so that's something. Most schools also have a head boy and a head girl who attend school council meetings and give a speech at prize games. I'm gonna look up that word, prefects. In some schools, a senior student authorized to enforce discipline. <laughs> giving at the end of the year. Interesting. I mean, here in the US, we do have some hall monitors. It's not actually that common, but sometimes a student will be deemed the hall monitor and he'll be like, He'll, he'll be stalking the hallway, you know, very, taking his job very seriously. Do you have your hall pass? Oh, prize giving is the closest thing that we have to a graduation ceremony. Exams. National exams are a huge... You guys don't have graduation ceremonies? ...huge part of the British school experience. It's all very simple. You take GCSEs at 16 and then A-levels at 18, which are kind of like AP exams, but different. Also, in <laughs> Scotland, they study for hires instead of A-levels, and GCSEs used to be called O-levels. Also, AS levels happen in the middle of A-levels. Look, it's just... This is the most complicated bit, I promise. Revision. Yeah, that kind of went over my head. This is just what we call studying for exams. It's not a biggie, just a lot of people seemed confused about it. Juniors and... Revision. ...for exams. Okay. That would be called cram... cramming. It's not a I biggie, guess. just a lot of Here people seemed confused about it. Juniors and seniors. Instead of the American system of elementary school, middle school, and so on, most British schools are divided into juniors and seniors. Junior school, also called primary school, is for 4 to 11 year olds, and senior school is for 11 to 18 year olds. At some public schools, they divide it up a little differently. They have pre-prep from 4 to 7, prep from 7 to 13, and then senior from 13 to 18. That's a lot more like America. Very similar to America there. Sixth form. It would just be elementary, middle, and high school. The last two years of school. Although there are some places, plenty of places, especially here in Indiana, where there is no, um, well, the, the elementary school and the, and the middle school are like combined in some places, which is weird to me. Senior. That would mean you, you're basically in school from, uh, four or four or five till like 13. From 13 to 18. Sixth form. And then you go to the high school. The last two years of school is called the sixth form, divided sixth. into the lower sixth and upper sixth. The name is a hangover from a previous, more complicated system of naming classes which has stuck around for some reason. In many schools, sixth formers are given a lot more freedom than the other students, often being allowed oh. to wear their own clothes instead of school uniform. See, that would be awesome. I like that. I like that. So you give them the free, you take it away, then you give it, and then it feels special. Here in America, there's nothing to give because you didn't take anything. <laughs> that sounds really kind of dystopian though like taking away people's freedoms just to give it back and be like, ha ah, now you feel special. But for kids, I think that's fine. <laughs> Maybe. Cool. University. You apply to do a single subject at British universities and only study that one thing. That's how it should be. That is how it should be. Duh. How, I mean, American, American college is honestly stupid as, it's stupid. It's so dumb. It's basically like high school again. No maths or language requirements or any of that other stuff that you have to do at American colleges. Bachelor's degrees generally take three years and you know what, let's just cover this in another three years the video. Wow. It's very complicated. I'll be watching that. So there we go. Are there any things about British schools that you have questions about? Yes. Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Also, if you have any other questions about British culture, you can tweet us at Anglophenia and maybe your topic will be covered in another video. <laughs> well, that was fantastic. I'm definitely subscribing to this because I can already tell this is a fantastic source for British things. And that's what this channel is about. Well, this channel is also about, you know, the whole UK and then sometimes other parts of Europe. And then sometimes, you know, a little reflection on the American, me as an American. Anyway. Have a great day, guys. Thank you for tuning in. And I will see you here tomorrow because you'll be here, right? I hope you are. Goodbye.